Welcome to another episode of Getting Dirty with Glenn. I'm out testing some new camera equipment today. The DJI Osmo, uh, or, I'm sorry, Action 4 with a wireless system. There's no transmitter or no receiver required. The microphone just connects via Bluetooth to the camera. I'm out on my Trek Marlin 8 Plus, the new e-bike from Trek, and I am loving it. And uh, let's get started here. Let me... What I want to do is I want to test, one, how this Bluetooth microphone works, make sure that it gets nice and clear. Uh, I love DJI's wireless systems. It's been a game changer for anybody that's a content creator. Now I'm crossing the Milwaukee River here on the Inner Urban Bike Trail. I'm only running 30 PSI on my tubeless tires here on my Trek Marlin Plus. So it isn't as loud. If I take, when I used to take my other bikes across this that had higher tire pressure, this is really loud. But this is part of my loop that I do, 10 to 15 mile loop. So I try to do three to five times a week. Um, and it works great. I'll be sharing some videos of how the Crate Bosch display works and how it works on your app, turning your, the app on your phone into this dashboard that gives you everything you'd ever want to know about <laughs> your ride and probably some things you don't. The only drawback I have is I have polarized sunglasses on from Tifosi and it kind of blacks out my screen. I've got to remove my sunglasses and then I can see the screen. But I'll climb up this hill and then I'm going to turn this off and next time We'll turn this back on is coming down into Cold Dock Park in beautiful Port Washington, right on Lake Michigan. All right, I lied. I wanted to uh, record this part of the trail, just talk a little bit of the history of the Inner Urban Bike Trail. When Cheryl and I moved back here in 2008 from the East Coast, one of the things we wanted to be near was a bike trail, and where we live in the condo in Mequon, <laughs> in Urban was just a little over a half mile away. Now I live on the north end of Grafton, which is about 10 miles north. And this bike trail uh, and kept in pretty good shape. I'd give it about a 10, 10 being good. I'd give the surface maybe a seven. Depends which bike I'm riding. On my Trek Marlin Plus, it's not a problem because I have front suspension on here. On my Cat Trike Recumbent 559. Uh, I'd score it lower because you feel more of the bumps, although I did switch the tires on my Cat Trike 559 to 2.0 Big Apples. And running lower pressure made a huge difference in how the trail feels. But one of the major things they did, I believe it was in 2008, they added this bridge that I'm coming up to, which goes over 43. I'm not sure how people followed the bike trail before then. I don't see any real direct pass between bike path. On your left. So they put this bike trail in, or this bridge in, that connected this easy access over 43. Very smooth, obviously safe. You're not gonna fall over the edge of this bridge. And uh, like I said, I don't know what it was like before this bridge. I can't imagine it. But after the bridge, it made it easy. All right, this time, the next video you see will be me riding the last half mile down into Coldock Park. As promised, we are on the final approach to Port Washington. When you get down to the bottom of this hill, you hang a left to actually follow the bike trail, but I like to go to Cold Dock Park. It's just part of my loop. Um, I often chuckle at people that are, since I live right on the inner bike trail in Grafton, in, especially in early spring, you'll see people on a warm day <laughs> um, wearing shorts and a tank top. Uh, maybe flip-flops on their bikes as they ride past coming down here to port. 
And if you ha don't know, if you don't spend a lot of time down at the lake, you don't realize there could be a tremendous difference in temperature, especially if the wind, like I said, is off from the east. The biggest temperature difference I've seen in the spring was as 85 degrees at my house, which is two miles inland from the lake, even though I can see Lake Michigan from my house, but two miles inland. Um, but just in that short two miles, it was 85 and it was 50 down here at the lake. Now, when you get down to this point, right here, feel the stop, nobody coming. What happens in this last two or three blocks or quarter mile, I guess, as you're coming in, is I used to be a certified scuba diver, and there's a thing called the thermocline when you're diving. You can feel it go as you dive deeper. You can feel it going right past your body as you go down. Or if you've ever gone swimming in a northern Wisconsin lake in the summer, the top two feet might be warm, and then you feel that thermocline. The well, same thing happens here. I don't feel it happening um, today. We're going right across, right to my left is a small creek where the salmon run up there every fall to lay their eggs and spawn. A lot of fishermen come in here. But like I said, when you come down here, turn left to actually follow the inner urban bike trail, which I might do later. But right now, I always suggest you take a little side trip to Coldock Park. Great thing about Wisconsin is, especially this part of Wisconsin, but almost everywhere you go in Wisconsin, tons of public access to the water, to the waterfront. A lot of other states you go to, it's pay to play, and here you don't. So now we're in Coldock Park. To my right, it won't show up on the camera is a Wee Energies plant. It used to be powered by coal. Everything you see in front of you, in fact, when Shell and I moved here 15 years ago, there were remnants of coal here, and this was just all fenced off. You couldn't even get in here. But the planters had an idea to uh, turn this into a park, which is great. See a gentleman fishing here for salmon, rainbow trout, coho, a lot of people here in the fall, just a few right now. I've seen them catching rainbow trout last week. See the lighthouses you come out here? Just can't beat this. You're at the waterfront. On my left is a big marina. You got the harbor in here. When it's too rough to go out, and Lake Michigan is really calm today. There's a harbor in here. But there's a harbor here, uh, a lot before you get into the marina. A lot of fishermen in smaller boats on rough days will just troll in here and catch salmon like crazy. To my right is a big open field, great for flying my stunt kites. I've got a couple of stunt kites rigid that are six or seven feet wide and a foil that's seven or eight feet wide. Come down here on a clear day like today, I look to the right, I can see Milwaukee, which is I think 27 miles to my south. This is it. I always come right down here to the end. People love coming down here. Stop here so they can get their picture. You hear that? That's what I love about being down here, how quiet it is, especially midweek. Even on the weekends, there aren't a lot of people down here, except holiday weekends. It's getting busier and busier here in Port as people discover it. You just can't beat how quiet this is. This is Cold Dock Park, like I said, in beautiful Port Washington. One of the best kept secrets here in Southeast Wisconsin.
turn the bike here around a little bit. You can see Port Washington over there. The new, I think it's called Inventors Brew Pub. The brown, tannish building over there. It's going to open in a month or so. You can walk going north there. You can walk now because the lake's down a little bit. But you can walk from here all the way up to Harrington Beach State Park, which I think I checked that it's 13 miles maybe. I can't remember offhand. But if you want to walk along the lake, you can still do that here. Just can't beat how quiet this is. Get back on my bike here. see if I look that way. You can see Milwaukee down there. Oh, come on. Over here. A little soggy out here. You can see Cold Oak Park out there. That's it. This is Getting Dirty with the Planet. I'll see you out on the trail.